2022 Open and quarterfinals are done, which means 99.999% of you are done with your 2022 season. That means we are getting ready for the 2023 season, and I'm going to give you a new cycle update. For those of you still getting ready for team or master's quarterfinals or the semifinals, Good luck in the rest of your season. We will have some things to help you and I'll talk to you about that. But first, I'm gonna start with all of those of you in the RX path, those of you that made quarterfinals and just finished. Some of the things that you can look forward to now as we move into training starting on April 4th are that we're gonna get back to some structured strength progressions. We know that we've been training basically for the open and quarterfinals almost for two months. If you take the two weeks before the first open workout all the way through quarterfinals, our training got relatively narrow to be a lot of capacity-based Metcons and really thinking of strength being tested in complexes or under fatigue or heavy workouts. And there wasn't a lot of just pure structure to drive up your back squat, your snatch, your clean, your jerk, your strict press, your bench press, and all of these kind of foundation elements. So right now, we're going to move into some more structure. It's going to start with a couple weeks of bodybuilding to get some muscle back on your system, and then we're going to try to move into more structured linear progressions of weightlifting and powerlifting base movements. Outside of the strength work, if we look at more of the CrossFit-based stuff, we're going to start to incorporate more movement variation back into the program. So similarly, to the strength progressions, a lot of people when they get ready for a competition, because we had the equipment list and the layouts for quarterfinals, their training got very narrow and we stopped doing kettlebell training, we stopped doing running progressions, and we stopped doing some of the fundamental things that are necessary to be rounded in fitness. So now is a good time as we move away from the open and away from the quarterfinals to kind of rebuild some of that broad general fitness that we all get into CrossFit for. And then finally, we we get a lot of intensity in the competitive part of the season. The Metcons, they're generally somewhere between three and 20 minutes, basically being as full throttle as you possibly can be for that whole period of time. And you're doing that multiple times per week. That is not a great way to kind of build a aerobic base foundation that you can build year after year after year to get more fit. So as we move away from the season into an off season, we're gonna do some more aerobic base building activities, which is going to be fun for this next cycle in the RX path because it leads us into Murph. So it's a good way to build aerobic fitness in a little bit more of a mixed modal crossfit -y style way. If you want pure linear progressions or cyclical work, you can check out the complete version of the TTT online programs, which will give you access to our endurance path. And you can also add aerobic training to the general stuff that we're going to cover in RX. But that's it for the RX division in our new cycle of compete. For intermediates, your season, some of you may have ended actually before the quarterfinal, so two weeks ago in the open, so you have been doing some training, but now the RX and intermediate are gonna kinda be working together a little bit more synergistically. I have got none and got some listed in here. So Mia has been building the gymnastics progressions for the TTT Compete program for the last I think it's been over a year now, and we've gotten a ton of positive feedback that we're trying to actually help people that want to compete in the sport tackle these high-level skills. A lot of times, people will just put muscle-ups in Metcon, and they'll just wait until the time cap. They'll do a muscle-up, sit there, stare at the ring, do another sloppy muscle-up, and by doing that, month after month after month, you don't really see a lot of structured progress. However, what we've built was actual training programs that pull some of this stuff out of Metcons, and we've created a year-long plan. The Got None people are basically trying to get their first muscle up, so it means you have don't have that, or first handstand push-up, or first chest-to-bar, and the Got Some is trying to build on that capacity to, yes, you got your first muscle-up, but now you need to be able to do multiple of them, and then you need to be able to put them in Metcons, and it's a very hard thing to develop that progress quickly. So we're starting this off-season with long gymnastics progressions, basically building volume, 
and giving you options so you know if you're in the got none or in the got some category, you have an option that kind of fits your athletic level. So that's the different part of intermediate. Everything else that I mentioned in RX is actually transferred down into intermediate. So all of the Metcon styles, all of the conditioning, all of the strength that we're gonna do is going to be the same. We're just gonna pull out some of the mixed modal gymnastics. Basically the gymnastics that's in Metcons is gonna get pulled out and turned into skill work. So that way we can build a foundation now and move every cycle throughout the year until we get to the open. And hopefully by that time or by this time next year, you're gonna be more confident to hit your gymnastics in the open and quarterfinals. Cause our goal for you guys in the intermediate division is to qualify for quarterfinals and kind of graduate into the RX division as a higher level competitor. So that's it for the RX and the intermediate. Masters athletes, quarterfinals ended for individuals, but you guys are still getting ready. So this weekend, we're actually running a simulation. Then you'll get three full weeks of training and one taper week leading into your quarterfinals which is really the first step to go to your next online quarterfinals, which is called semifinals for less athletes, but it's still gonna be operating in the gym. But during that process, we're gonna give you the same type of support that we gave our individual athletes. So when the workouts come out, we'll give you some thoughts on the order that you can tackle them in, warmups for them, some targets, some of the major bottlenecks in them, and just some general mental prep for the competition for masters athletes. So right now, your new cycle is really getting ready for the next stage of your big competition. For elites, you guys, you just basically took the next step in your season and nothing really changes except now we are preparing for semifinals, which means the workouts are gonna have a little bit of a different feel. They're gonna be heavier. They're gonna require moving barbells forward. They're gonna require long transitions between workouts so you have to practice running. We are going to be adding running progressions and rowing progressions and skiing progressions and all sorts of things that you'll see at the next, next stage when you get to your semifinal and have to compete in person. As promised, when we started our open prep cycle, for those of you that have been in the program and have been reporting your results that have qualified for semifinals, we're gonna try to help you create an individualized taper dependent upon whether you're the first weekend semifinal, second weekend semifinal, third weekend semifinal, or final semifinal. So that way you have some sort of a training program that is built to get you as ready as you possibly can be on the weekend that you're actually competing. That is it for all of the divisions for our new cycle in TTT Compete. Now I'm gonna sit down with the rest of the coaches. We're gonna try to dive a little bit deeper into all of this so you can get some insight into the nuts and bolts that guide the training program. Hopefully you are ready for the 2023 season training to start or you're ready to crush and finish off the 2022 season strong. Hopefully you'll do it with us. Thank you very much. You guys keep going. I'm going to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are coming up on a new cycle in TTT Compete. Quarterfinals is officially over. Yep. And we're moving on. Not officially over. Well. Because they're still validating scores. That's true. You can no longer do workouts. You can't. Yeah. I guess yeah. you could, but they wouldn't count. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, wow. What a weekend. It was a lot of fun. It was. It was awesome. We had a huge turnout on site and I feel like it went pretty well. Yeah. We just did yeah. a podcast on that. Max and I just uh, did, talked for like an hour and a half. So if you're interested in that, that'll come out on Wednesday of this week. <laughs> Max is drawn He's, into the Wordle. If I you're wondering, it. Max is- You got the Wordle? Yeah, I got it. You solved it? Yeah. Don't, Go ahead. You can say it because everyone yeah, that this plays is Wordle will, will have seen this after. Yeah. I um, haven't, I haven't done it yet today. today so. Yeah. Fuck it. One okay. played, one hundred percent win, one streak. <laughs> I'm fucking done. I'm no, retiring. Congratulations, <laughs> undefeated. Don't tell you me the words. I haven't done it, it yet. Was. I haven't okay. done it yet. Oh, but I know two letters. You can go ahead and tell me. No. <laughs> oh, you haven't anyway, done. It. I haven't yeah. done it. No. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Moving a good on. game. All right, man. So yeah, quarterfinals wrapped up. We just wasted three minutes on that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I felt like it was ten minutes. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. Yeah, so uh, we needed to film a video because now that quarterfinals is over, a large uh, portion of our community um, is not moving on to semifinals. Wah, Some wah. are, 
And we want to talk about what the compete program is doing moving forward in the coming months, leading into semis and leading into the summer for people that did not make semis. And I think it's important to note, this is the time of year where all of the paths are doing different things, or yeah. especially right now, like we'll talk about it, but elite, they'll be focusing on semifinals, masters, which again, we'll talk about this, but we're peaking right now for their age group qualifier, their quarterfinals, which is in a few weeks. And then obviously RX and intermediate are doing something different. Yeah. So let's go one by one. Uh, where do you want to start? I, I think we actually, let's start in the reverse order, what we normally do. Let's talk masters and elite because oh. they're, in, they're doing something different. And then we'll kind of finish with the, the new cycle for RX. Okay. So, so we're going to finish with who's still in season right now and what we're doing and then go to people move into the off season yeah, for 2020. Yeah. So, so let's start here with masters mm -hmm. for those that are in the program. You've already had plenty of videos from me. I post something new each week, kind of talking the layout of, of the week and what to plan for. There are a few weeks left of training as we peak for their quarterfinals as you just saw with the first quarterfinals, it's going to be a lot of chaos, probably five workouts, just like last year. You have deadlines. So we're making sure that you're prepared for that. The one thing I'll say is for those that qualified for quarterfinals that are age group athletes and they're looking for training, this is a great option. You yeah. can jump in right now and we will guide you through the quarterfinals. And then those that qualify from quarterfinals, to semifinals, we will guide you from quarterfinals into semifinals. So we have a plan in place for all of these athletes. You were about to say something. I was Go just going to say the, the thing about a lot of training programs or people that are master's athletes that might've snuck in is a lot of them are probably just following more general class-based sure. structures or something. But right now we actually have the equipment list yes. for master's training. So having some yeah. structured extra practice with those things for the next couple of weeks actually could make a skill adaptation difference. Yeah. yeah. One of the big things is the heavier dumbbell. So that yeah. it, the 70 pound and 50 pound dumbbell, just one is on the equipment list, which likely means that you're going to see something like a single arm overhead lunge, single arm overhead squat, maybe a single arm hang clean and jerk at a heavier load than we're used to. So one of the things that we're doing is giving those athletes that are 55 and younger, the 70 and 50, yeah. and then 55 plus, they're using a 50 and a 35 now, not in every training session, but that's just one uh, simple example that you alluded to. You could yeah. also use two dumbbells, right? Like a heavy 70 and a For 50 sure. in the yeah. front rack or something. Yeah, 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 that'd be that'd be challenging. Something too to mention for masters is that we're doing a simulation this weekend. Yes. So we've got the workouts prepared based on the equipment list that we know, and we're going to run some workouts through the weekend. And I think that uh, in the program or maybe new to the program, this is a fantastic opportunity to see where you stack against the more competitive masters field. You know where you stack in the open world and in the setting of like the week one to three workouts. This is a good chance to see what your weaknesses might be based on this selection of movements. And you still have like four weeks after that to to prepare for, uh, or how many weeks after it? Three weeks, Three weeks after yeah. it. Two training to, weeks. To kind of like paper. brush up on the things that you saw got exposed relative to the internal leaderboard we have. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. We did this with our RX athletes, intermediate athletes that went into quarterfinals. Yeah. It, Mike already mentioned this, but that's obviously you can compare yourself. The other thing too is just to practice the, almost the anxiety, the, the <laughs> Mike's ears hot <laughs> again. And we didn't <laughs> mention that Mia's in the corner. Yes, did Mia. We? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> The, the pressure of doing five workouts in a weekend, I think that's important to practice. And then also like the little things, like how am I going to, you know, fuel myself throughout the weekend? What What is my food going to look like? What's my sleep going to look like? What's my recovery, warmups and cool downs? So this opportunity with a simulation allows you to do that. And we kind of guide that process for you. Cool. Yeah. So anything else to touch on the master's plan there? Yeah, I think just big picture is that we have a plan in place for you. So warm ups, cool downs, we're telling you exactly what to do each day. And then obviously once we get to that weekend, I think one of the cool things that we do is we break down every single workout. Yep. So similar to what we did for our RX athletes and quarterfinals or even elite athletes, we will do a full video with warm ups, cool downs, and a pacing strategy based on H division. Yeah. And we'll make sure to make the, the, the bold really large. <laughs> yeah. the, the, tech, the text oh, really no. large. So. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I can say that I'm, I'm yeah, a master's true, athlete. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Both no shame. Us. Yeah. And I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so I need it. And your second pair too. Yeah, that's true. We lost one. See? All I'm, right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> semifinals. Well, if you are in semifinals and you are training with us, congratulations. It means that we were successful and that you're getting ready now for the next stage of the sport. And now is where it starts to get really serious for people that want game spots. I feel like it's still stressful to try to make semifinals, but there are some people that kind of are in the semifinals path that knew if they executed, they were going to be there. Yeah. Now it's like the pressure's on. Even yeah. if you're great, if you show up and have a bad workout at semifinals, then it could cost you a ticket to the games. 
And this is kind of a real high pressure situation for most of the athletes in the program, which means now we're going to have to kind of start switching the way that we train to look more sports specific for semifinals, long transitions, workouts that have heavy weights that we really haven't seen yet. Like the heaviest thing that we really saw in all of the quarter, aside from the max, but in all of the open and quarterfinals was the power snatch at 185, 135, but CrossFit has been notorious in regionals or games for putting out workouts that are way heavier Mm -hmm. than that way heavy four or five deadlifts. Yeah. Yeah, That type of stuff. So we'll start integrating some of the strength stuff into the Metcon. I'll start encouraging people to do longer transitions in workouts. All of the throwdowns are going to be written for semifinals prep. And then I'm going to explain how to do them as an RX or intermediate athlete to fit within the context of your season. But now it's going to kind of be an opportunity for us to get into that in-person competition mode with more cyclical stuff, more variation of movements, heavier workouts. Running further than 25 (laughs) feet at a time. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Touching the line. Yeah. (laughs) So we'll be going through just our normal semifinals prep and then the beneficial thing, which I've already talked to a lot of people in the program, but the people that have been in the program with actual accounts that they've paid for, because I know some people say they follow the program, but they're not, they're just stealing it really. But the people that are in the program and actually have an account and have reported results since the open, I'm going to figure out a system for creating an individualized taper relative to what weekend you've qualified. Because now it gets a little complicated with May 20th and then 28th and then June 2nd and then June 10th. And then if you do qualify from there, we kind of just run the same process through the game. So we have a pretty good group now getting ready for semifinals. And now it gets a little bit more fun where we have like regular leaderboard training pressure with all of the elites that qualified Mm -hmm. all on a very similar program, doing a lot of similar things together. So it's going to be an exciting time of the year for the program to also be lined up with the on-site environment of athletes that qualified through yeah. at the quarterfinals here. Yeah, one thing I think is really cool, and this happened last year too, is there are so many people that that we have that qualified and everyone's doing the same workout. So you can kind of, again, compare yourself and like, man, I really need to work on this or, okay, I'm competitive with these guys. Now I need to just kind of tweak this little thing. So it's like more feedback, especially for those that are training by themselves. It's just really hard to know how fast you really need to go in workouts. Yeah. So that's all I got for semifinals. Do I, mean, I need I the big thing is once you know you're in and what week you know you're going, like reach out and we'll figure out how to take care of you. For sure. Yeah. And if you're interested in just joining us for training through the semis and you haven't been in the program, I still think that there's going to be a lot of value in having the training program all the way from now until about two weeks out from the first weekend where the individualization process happens. And if you want to jump in the program and you feel like you need a little bit of guidance, I'm not saying that I won't help or I won't be like helpful in that process, but get signed up, get in there and then email me after probably the first two weeks of training to kind of give me some context for where you're competing, what yeah. your weaknesses are, what you need to work on, what type of help you need. And, you know, we'll try to do our best to accommodate everyone. Yeah. And we don't have the details completely finalized yet, but we're going to try and put together a semi prep camp as well. I'm excited about that. That's oh, going to yeah. be yeah. sheer chaos. Yes. With the amount of people that we have. Yes. <laughs> It'll be, it'll be less it'll, it'll, less than yeah. quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah. Be, it's just so many Nothing's like, more know, chaos than quarterfinals. Yeah. yeah. Too many alpha personalities though. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> just did a, a quarterfinal review podcast, which will come out maybe a day after this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's talk about RX and intermediate. All right. All right. Now the fun. Yeah. So this uh the RX now is for for folks who did not make semis, right? Season's done. I wrote this week to basically take advantage of having some downtime and having a period of reflection. It's super important after you kind of push with everything you have throughout a season, you have to create some kind of a transition period to actually spend time to reflect on things that you need to be better at and actually do a comparison as well, right? Like it's really easy when your goal is like semifinals or bust, you know, and if you didn't make that goal, then it can be extremely discouraging. And you oftentimes overlook the amount of progress you might've made along the way. So I put in a lot of details in the program this week on things to do to reflect. So you can actually celebrate some of the progress that you made along the way, even if you didn't make the ultimate goal of making a semifinal, that wasn't everyone's goal in the program. But for those that were striving for it, I think it's important to look back at, you know, a comparison from the year before, look at the change in um, tests that they had, and just make sure that you do celebrate some of the wins along the way. 
What's yeah, up, Brandon? Yeah, I was just going to say when he says this week, this is the week of March 28th. And yeah. then the program, we'll talk about March, April 4th is yep. the start of this new cycle. Yeah. So I'm suggesting like this, the week after quarterfinals, like chilling out and having some downtime and making sure that you take care of your body, get rid of any like tweaks and nags and injuries that have kind of been um, lingering on for a long period of time. And then next week um, is going to start like a two week phase of getting back into um, kind of like bringing back up some fitness that might've been lost in the last several months as we prepared for the specifics of quarterfinals. So what I mean by that is when you know the equipment list that you're doing, when you know, you're preparing for the open, you know, you're preparing for quarterfinals, all of your fitness, you know, can be like done in a phone booth, you know, like yeah. everything is like, um, so predictable and you stop doing things that, you know, um, would kind of create more rounded fitness in general and in life. So we're going to get back to that for a couple of weeks and do some things like, you know, running, get back to chasing the pump a little bit, doing some bodybuilding and just basically de-stressing away from like CrossFit Metcons for a little bit. We'll still do CrossFit movements, but it's not going to be in the format of like preparing for hard quarterfinals again. Yeah. I think that's confusing for people sometimes in thinking that you go through a competition and there's all of this intensity, but the process of actually going through the competition might actually have lowered people's fitness in terms yeah. of well-roundedness. And I think getting yourself back to being well-rounded is very important, probably more important for the next season than thinking, oh, I just went through these three tests or the three tests of the open and the five tests of quarterfinals. These things got exposed. I want to work on them and crush my weaknesses. And then you put all your training on those things to find out the next year that those things are different. So yeah. I think it's very important to go through this kind of like structural rebuild phase where you start to integrate all all of the CrossFit stuff back in. So yeah. that when, when you get back to training in a well-rounded way, your body's kind of recaptured some of that lost fitness. Yeah. I mean, the time constraint on your progress in training is different now, right? So before this, as we're building up to a competition, we had a set date of when you had to be at your best. So that removes the ability to spend a lot of extra time working on details of things that are holding you back. And what I mean by that is like technicalities in your lifting. So if you've got an early arm bend and it kind of like slowed you down from being better at your snatches or your cleans, you don't necessarily have the time to like break it down and do block work when you're three weeks out of competition. You've got to be ready to perform. Now we have that time. So we're going to do some technical work for a couple of weeks on the Olympic lifts. We're going to do some rotational work, like making sure that we are getting back to moving in different planes that we haven't trained in a while. We do some plyometric work. A lot of things that are just really fun that are just kind of outside of the box on normal training that we did for a few weeks. Yeah. I think the big picture is have some fun for a few weeks and we can still train hard. We can still push. We can still do a couple fun workouts that are going to be challenging that look like CrossFit, but also at the same time do again, some of those things that are more like structural base or like, let's start building a nice foundation. And to Max's point, we talked about this in the podcast, but it's, we're all always so overreactive when things don't go our way, or maybe when things do go our way. And what we want to do is slow everything down a little bit, have some time for some self-reflection for us to be able to reflect on the season and see what we can do better as coaches and then start building a program that makes sense for the next season. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, the throwdown will still be there at the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. We're going to have some fun semifinal style throwdowns as well. So yeah. they'll have yeah. opportunities to do that. Yeah. So that, that'd be a couple of weeks of that. And then uh, starting the week of the 18th, April 18th is when we'll actually get into strength progressions again, that are on like a linear cycle again. So we'll have some back squat progressions, uh, snatch block work, clean and jerk cluster work, barbell cycling work, jerk technical work, bench press work. Oh, so God, it's I an awesome it. cycle. One <laughs> thing I'm really excited it. about is the, the, the squat cycle we put in, I wrote in a bunch of options that you can hit twice a week. So that's something that we always talk about that needs to be in strength programs year round for people to maintain their absolute strength and continue to make progress in the sport is staying on consistent strength cycles. I don't mean beating yourself up and not being smart about when you need to take downtime and changing up movement patterns. But I, I don't think you need to go uh, really long periods of time without some form of smart, progressive strength work in your, in your training. Yeah. I mean, especially for RX athletes that want to succeed in the quarterfinals in the future, one week strength event will keep you out no yep. matter what. I like know. you could, even if you can cycle 185 or 135 pretty well, which yep. I would say is more of a moderate loading in CrossFit. Yeah you could crush workouts one, two, and three, do okay in five. And if you s suck at four because you just strength levels aren't high enough, you will automatically not be making semifinals. Yeah. It's just too big of a gap to close. There's too many strong people now. Yep.
Yeah, it, it really is crazy. Oh, God. God. That's numbers. insane. I know. That's it, it, nuts. It, it impresses me and at the same time selfishly makes me very insecure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not the strong what guy. Happened? Yeah. I'm like, but he can breathe too and he's cleaning 400. How does this happen? <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I love the sport. Like it just brings out these mutants. Yeah. <laughs> mutants. Yep. Okay. So that's the plan RX intermediate. What's up, Mia? Hello. Oh, you're on the spot now, Mia. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Us. So intermediate path. Um, if anyone's new to our program, the difference between RX and intermediate is that the intermediate path puts a lot of focus on gymnastics development. And I think that's something that you just don't really see in group training. And, um, if you have those holes, I highly recommend looking at your season as a year long process of building your skills and not a, Oh, the opens coming up. I need to find it eight weeks to my muscle up type yeah. progression. Not saying those don't work, but they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying they no, don't work, no. but they don't. Work. Um, yeah. I, there's just so much more to it than just getting one rep. So um, what the intermediate path does, does is it focuses on those progressions year round. So, um, we're coming off of three weeks of a foundational, uh, style training because with the open ended and we went into our off season, um, what we did there is we did a lot of gymnastics, positional work, strength work, rebuilding some basic strength levels and, um, basic aerobic work. So now everyone in intermediate should be feeling pretty good, pretty recovered from the open. And we're going to start our gymnastics skill progressions back up. So what I did is I divided the year into, well, Mike divided the year into five cycles and then I followed suit <laughs> and, but I, I divided I like to the, organize. Yes. The gymnastics progressions into five cycles. Um, and within those five cycles, there are always two options. First one is got none. That means you do not have the skill. Those are going to repeat throughout the year as people come into the program. Cause the goal is you do the got none progressions and then you're able to progress into the got some progressions, mm -hmm. which is, um, and next you, level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so got none, basically we're addressing, um, ring muscle up, bar muscle up, chest bar. Let me look at my list. I don't forget any handstand walk, strict handstand push up, kipping handstand push up, and everyone's favorite movement, especially Brandon wall walks. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I feel like it was, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I feel like every week someone was posting and celebrating their success with getting their first rep throughout like the last several cycles that we've done. I also have saved so many comments of people thanking you for gymnastics progressions yeah. in that's both nice the of you. Yeah. But that's yeah. the nicest yeah. thing you've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't share them to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you hit them. I saved them. I, I just thought it was really interesting. And I agree. The more I've been around this, the more I realized that to really get good at anything requires a lot of time. But when it comes to gymnastics for people that don't have extensive gymnastics or strength backgrounds, it's a long process to go from like, I can't do a pull up to, I want to do eight muscle ups in the middle of a workout. And what you've put together, I think has genuinely helped people cultivate those skills. So I guess just props and good for these people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The appreciation Woo! day. Thank you, Mia. She's crying. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's the got none. <laughs> Then, um, the got some, which is also running. So each day that we do our gymnastics progressions, which is going to be four days out of the week, um, you're going to have these two options. So you can pick whichever works best for you. Same eight skills. Um, but here, this is going to be progressive throughout the year. So there's a podcast that Brandon and I did it was either a few months ago or a few years ago. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but it was called, um, maybe Chris can link it, but, uh, training priorities for the developing athlete. That was a few months ago. Like that. Yeah. Okay. A few months ago. Yep. Um, and then Max and Brandon also did a podcast right after the open and touched on the same thing. And that's how to progress your gymnastics. Um, s basically systematically, not just, Oh, I can do a muscle up. All right, cool. Now I'm just going to start doing Metcons and have to stare at the rings and hope that they get better. That may work over time, but I don't think it's the best way to approach it. So this year for intermediate, 
we have our five cycles. We're going to start off with, this is in the got sum again. We're going to start off with just isolated volume tolerance. So this means in all of those skills, we're just going to build, build volume. Um, we're not mixing it with CrossFit. We're not mixing it with anything. We're just getting to the point where you're, you're comfortable doing two ring muscle ups or seven ring muscle ups, whatever is appropriate for you. So that's what we're going to be working on in this cycle. Um, it'll be pulled out of the CrossFit work and just focused on that. And I ask the people in the program to just be patient with it because mm. we will put it back into CrossFit. But for now, just trust that that's the way that you need to be training it. This is going to progress. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're not doing CrossFit. It just means that Correct. if RX is doing a workout that's thrusters and muscle ups, you'll pull the muscle ups out to make it skill work and then yes. put something else in to get the stimulus to Correct. make sense Correct. like RX. Yes. So we still try to give you your crack because we know you all want <laughs> yes. to do that. For sure. I mean, arguably the crack is more painful when there's not gymnastics yeah. bottlenecks yeah. in yeah. it. So so true. That's all true. The open you get, we're going to give you more of your crack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Weeks one through three of the open. Yeah, true. Ugh. Uh, that podcast was on November 3rd, 2021. Look at how organized right. Mike Boom. is. Nice, nice. nice. Um, so I'm just going to touch it. on how this is going to progress throughout the year um, to hopefully get some buy-in and maybe you guys will trust me and um, be patient with it. So this is this cycle, isolated volume tolerance. Next cycle, we're going to start adding some um, aerobically taxed volume. So that'll be something like you're running and you're doing intervals of running and muscle ups where you're learning to do all of these movements under breathing fatigue. The next cycle will start working on muscular limitations into it. So if it's a pressing movement, maybe you're doing barbell work that's uh, taxing your pressing or burpees and then into the movement. So you're building tolerance there. The next cycle, we're going to start putting in um, more CrossFit style uh, work where it's intervals of just chaos with your gymnastics movements. And Hopefully, um, if you stick it out throughout the year, by the time we get to open prep next year, you will be ready to do, to attack these movements within workout, within CrossFit workouts with confidence, being able to know yourself and know how to break it up. Um, you're, and actually be able to train hard with these movements. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the alternative of like, all right, I'm eight weeks out. I still got to like, now I'm going to take my skill progression serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, to, to Mia's point too, of like having like a systematic plan. I think everyone after the open, we talked about this a little bit in the open podcast that Max and I did, but they think immediately, like I got to build my capacity. But if you don't have those movements, you can never express your true sport specific capacity. So starting from like the bottom, and building up so that you can do muscle ups or handstand push ups or handstand walking in workouts will allow you then to better express that capacity once it comes out in the test. Yeah, that's my problem in 22.2. I'm still trying to get my first burpee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was failing it over and over and over. <laughs> Golly. I felt like I was failing burpees. <laughs> I, I don't think like I'm doing my, this right. I felt like my body was failing me. <laughs> in the it's supposed out. to be this hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By putting into context, my brother's pretty fit and he like does bodybuilding and jujitsu. And he told, he sent me a email or a text message. He's like, I tried to do 10 burpees every minute on the minute. And after 10 burpees, I was so messed up. So I <laughs> cut it down to five. And I was like, just to put in context, what I watched two weeks ago, I was like, not just a normal burpee, but jumping over a bar, a mm. hundred of those and a hundred deadlifts at 225 in like seven yeah. minutes. And he was like, that's not possible. Yeah. I'm like, no, it is. Yeah. It's amazing how people can do like the elite athletes can do a movement like that. Like it's like they're out running. Yeah. They're just you going know? for a jog. Yeah. It's crazy. We, uh, did we take away your fire? Is that, was that the end of your, am I still connected? Oh, I wasn't sure connected. if I got disconnected. Oh, yeah. uh, that's oh, yeah. basically I it. Yeah. Um, I guess one more structure thing is we're going to be running a week, B week. So you'll be touching each skill. Um, every other week in those progressions. Oh, I like that. Awesome. So for people that don't know, they might not know a week, B week. It basically means like week one of the program, she'll do one of the skills that she has in her rotation. And then week two, she'll do a different one of the skills. And then when it gets back to week three, you cycle through and repeat that first movement. So when you write a training structure that way, you can get more skills in. You're just not touching them every week. You're touching them every other week, which is still generally enough to get a skill better. I love it. Yeah. I'm do the intermediate path. Thanks, Mia. That was, that was an awesome update. You guys have anything else to add on any of the other divisions, programs? Yeah. I, I'm, I think 
for those that are frustrated or those that are super happy with their scores, now's the time to kind of come up with a game plan for the year. That yep. doesn't mean that you have to start killing yourself right now. And we certainly aren't going to allow you to do that in our programs because we want to build a nice foundation as Mia just uh, talked about. But it is important that you get into a structure and have a plan for the season so that you can build the goals, build to the goals that you have for the 2023 season, which yeah. will be here before you know it. Yeah, don't I, you say that. I will say that. I don't want to do the open again. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a bunch of questions for people that aren't ready to like jump into structure and they're like, I want to do some bodybuilding and stuff and do some lower intensity work that um, we've, I've pushed them into using complete yeah. so they can switch back and forth. So you have the option to basically turn on um, the, the membership you have to where you can have access to the fitness programs too, where you can work back and forth. And I think now is the time to take advantage of that. If it's, if you're not ready to like jump back into CrossFit, sure. like That's as coaches, option. like I have to recommend that. Yeah. And I think also a way to be creative is it, let's say you're somebody that knows just, you need general conditioning, strength and skills. Yep. You can actually go in and take Mia's gymnastic skill from the intermediate. You can do some bodybuilding for your strength and you can do some of the cyclical or some of the easy Metcons from the RX path. You can yep. just kind of pick and choose yeah. and kind of organize your training in a less systematic way for a couple of weeks just to keep fitness. So you're not deteriorating. Yep. For sure. Uh, one more thing too, in the RX. So we've also had questions, people doing team. So we're two weeks out. Um, I, we are just basically at this point writing team workouts. I think with it being this close, you should be working out with your team as much as you can. You shouldn't be doing a lot of intervals or EMOMs. It needs to be like, you know, sports specific go time. So, um, four or five days this week have team workouts. We'll do the same thing next week, but that's basically it leading into it. So for those doing team that are in the RX or intermediate, good luck with that. Crush it. Yep. You guys have anything else? Mia, Mia has a paper airplane. I didn't Thank fly you. Anywhere. All right. Oh no, it might be a note. Uh, it's not a note. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, friends.